Hello, sweet ladies. For those of you who have been in a formal meeting group, you have taken the holidays off and you are back and I wanna welcome you back. I can assure you that this semester is going to be amazing if you will see it to completion. I want you ladies to get all of this training and equipping and knowledge and foundation. So please don't let Satan steal even so much as one session from you. So. All of you know that we have started our second book in the New Testament, and that is the book of Acts. You are going to be trekking through the book of Acts, and I do literally mean trekking because you are going to be going on missionary journeys throughout this book. So just um, grab your Bibles, enjoy this, and try to close your eyes and see what's going on in the scriptures. So I want to start today, just like we did with John, and go over a few facts on Acts. So let's look at a few facts on Acts as we begin this journey together. The first one is, this is the historical book of the New Testament. Acts is the historical book of the New Testament. So we have the Gospels, and then we have lots of letters, and Acts gives us the historical foundation for the New Testament, so remember that. The second fact I want you to know is that Luke is the author of the book, okay? Luke wrote the book of Acts. The next fact that I want you to jot down is that this book documents the start of the church, okay? Acts documents the start of the church, and it also documents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all believers. It documents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all believers. So that's what we're going to talk about today, our sixth biblical foundation. We could not study the book of Acts if we did not specifically study the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to start by giving you kind of a chronological review of the Holy Spirit because remember we want to study scripture we don't want to study opinion so I want us to look at the Holy Spirit all throughout scripture and see if we can kind of see or learn a little bit about this um, person this gift now the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and we see that, that he was there in the beginning, okay? So Ge um, Genesis 1-2 tells us, Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, was there in the beginning, okay? So that chronologically is where we see the start. Now... The second thing that we see is the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given to world changers, okay? So that's your second chronological step in seeing the Holy Spirit. He was given to or poured out on world changers. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples of this, and I want you to jot them down. Um, but we won't be able to go over them just for time's sake right now. So just jot these down and you can go back and look on some of these accounts. The first one is Numbers 11, 24 through 30. Deuteronomy 34, 9. Uh, Judges 6, 34. And then 1 Samuel 16, 13. So those are just some accounts where you can see some world changers um, empowered really by the Holy Spirit. Now... During that time in the Old Testament, there was a prophecy that was given, and that was in Joel 2, 28 through 29, and it said, one day the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all believers, and so this is where the joy and excitement for us comes in. We switch over to the New Testament, okay? So Jesus comes on the scene, and while he is walking on the earth, he tells about a new gift that is to come. You saw that when you were reading John and studying John, specifically John 16, verses 5 through 15. Jot those down. You can go back and look at that. But Jesus is telling us that this great gift is, is coming and then in this past week's reading you see that Jesus tells right before he's going to ascend he tells the disciples to wait in Jerusalem on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that's found in Acts 1 4 through 9 and really the first half of Acts chapter 2 so 
That's the next chronological step. And then we see the outpouring of the power um, of the Holy Spirit. And then the power comes on Peter. And he is the first person that we see in the New Testament really exercising that after the outpouring. And he preaches a message and tons of souls are won for Jesus. And that happens in Acts 2.14. So we are just... Um, excited to study this beautiful um, person, this beautiful power, this beautiful blessing named the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to tell you a few facts about the Holy Spirit for New Testament believers because that's really what we are. And so that's what we want to study. It's so neat to study the Old Testament scriptures, but it's very practical and tangible for us to study the Holy Spirit as New Testament believers. So the first note I want you to write under that point is that the Holy Spirit comes on a believer at salvation, okay? The Holy Spirit comes on a believer at salvation. You see that found in Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. And so know that that's when the Holy Spirit comes on us as believers is at our salvation. The next thing I want you to jot down is the Holy Spirit is our counselor. And um, some scripture references for that would really be all of John, but especially or specifically John 14, 26 or John 15, 26. We really see that that is a huge role that the Holy Spirit is to us is he's our counselor. Um, another awesome fact for New Testament believers is the Holy Spirit gives us power. The Holy Spirit gives us power. And that's found in Acts 1, 8. One reference to that would be Acts 1, 8. So remember that the Holy Spirit was on all world changers in the Old Testament, but now he is in all believers in the New Testament. So that means us. So I want you to think about that in reference as we start talking about what the Holy Spirit means to us today, tangibly today. And I think that you're going to see that that really means that we are all called to be world changers. So let's continue our taking notes. Please just keep in mind, too, we're still just doing a biblical foundation. So no matter how much you think you're writing or how fast you're writing or how many scriptures we're referencing, we're not going to figure out the Holy Spirit today. And we're not going to study him exhaustively today by any stretch of the imagination. But we are going to try to continue to lay a biblical foundation. So let's look right now what we're going to call three components to walking with the Holy Spirit. Three components to walking with the Holy Spirit because that's really what we want to learn about. As um, New Testament believers, we have the power, we have the counselor, we have all those things, but how do we tangibly walk that out? And the first component is just being in the Word. Just being in the Word. And that may sound like a contradiction but it's not really. That's where all of our truth comes from. And that's where we have our basis for when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and when the Holy Spirit leads us, we can always go back and confirm, does that match up with the Word? Does that line up with the Word? So we must be in the Word, okay? And so the next component would be listening and obeying in big decisions. We really want to know what the Holy Spirit is telling us because in the Word, we do see some wonderful things laid out, but sometimes we have decisions and we can't go find an exact scripture that tells us what we are supposed to do in our current century, in our current time, what we're supposed to do with that big decision. And so we want to learn to start listening and obeying the Holy Spirit in big decisions, feeling a yes or a no or a peace or a lack of peace. All of those things are involved. And then thirdly, we want to learn how to daily walk with the Spirit. We want to learn how to daily walk with the Spirit. One example I always give when I talk about this is we do not want to say things like, Oh, God doesn't care about what I wear, what I eat, or what I do in the small things. Because that sentence starts with, God doesn't care. And that is never, ever true. God does care about everything. And so we want to learn to start walking daily with the Spirit. So we may hear the Spirit say, don't eat that sometimes, or do eat that sometimes. Or we may hear the Spirit say, don't wear that. Or some of those things that we think are menial or don't really matter, the Holy Spirit will prompt us in those areas as well. So 
the next thing that we're going to do is really focus in and hone in on this daily walking with the Spirit. And we are going to call those seven keys to daily walking with the Holy Spirit. Seven keys to daily walking with the Holy Spirit. Now the first key is going to be found in James 1.5. And that tells us that this wisdom that we are going to get is from above. It's from God. It's not wisdom from below, which is the world, okay? Or from evil. So this is wisdom from above, not wisdom from below. So just remember that when we're walking with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, we are going to get wisdom and insight, but it is not always going to look like the world's wisdom would look. So this is wisdom from above, not wisdom from below. So again, these are some things just to get you thinking about your daily walk with the Spirit. The second one would be practice builds faith. Practice builds faith. If you were to ask me about my journey with the Holy Spirit or my ability to discern and hear from the Spirit today, it would be so much greater than it, than it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I just only hoped to hear from the Spirit or only hoped to discern from the Spirit. Um, and now I feel so much more at peace or confident that I do hear from the Spirit and that I do that I can confirm or go with uh, the leading that he gives. And so just know that practice builds faith. This is a lifetime, a journey. I think that when we get to our end years, we'll have the sweetest fellowship ever with the Spirit. Um, but just know that it's a journey, but practice in it builds faith. When we hear the Holy Spirit, we obey um, and we see fruit from it or we have confirmation from it, that builds our faith just to hear more or to walk more with the Spirit the next time. Now, with that thought, I also want you to remember for point number three is you are never too old or too young in your faith to hear from the Holy Spirit. You are never too old or too young in your faith to hear from the Holy Spirit. Remember, He comes to us at salvation, okay? He comes to us at salvation. So you could be saved one day, 24 hours, 15 minutes, and the Spirit could prompt you to do something, and that could be completely from the Spirit. Or you could be um, buying into a lie that the glory days of your walk are past or... Um, that you know you used to be really on fire when you first got saved and now you've just been walking with a long time and it's dull that is not from God you are never too old or too young to hear from the Holy Spirit now I want you to jot down this for point number four God's sovereignty trumps your ability God's sovereignty trumps your ability to hear and follow correctly let me say that one more time. God's sovereignty trumps your ability to hear and follow correctly. This is a very freeing thing to know um, that God has all of this under control. It is not all up to your ability to hear perfectly or follow perfectly when you walk with the Spirit. So that's one thing that I used to just struggle with so much was I wanted to hear from the Spirit, but I was so worried about messing up. I was so worried about messing up, and that was not God's desire. He knew my heart. He knew I desired to walk with the Spirit, that I desired to obey the Holy Spirit's leadings and counsel and wisdom. And so He sovereignly trumped things when I was wrong or situations. So don't ever feel that burden that you, if you don't get it right, you're going to mess it up. Um, the only way that you could not get it right is to be in full-on disobedience or sin. And so just know that if your heart's trying, God's sovereignty will trump your ability. Now let's move on to point number five. Point number five is this. This connection will not fix all of your problems. This connection with the Holy Spirit will not fix all of your problems, but it will give you the grace to get through them. This connection will not fix all of your problems, but it will give you the grace to get through them. The Holy Spirit is not, or following the Holy Spirit or walking with the Holy Spirit is not some kind of equation that we want to plug in for a solution on life, okay? We don't want to say, if I 
follow the Holy Spirit's counsel perfectly. I will never have a struggle. I will never have a suffering. I'll never have a sickness. I'll never have a problem, a bump in the road, nothing. That just is not true. We know that times of suffering will come, but the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. Remember, yes, He is there for counsel, but He's also there for power, which probably means that you will need Him in impossible times. That power will come in impossible situations. So that's just a huge blessing for us um, and just a huge reminder for us that we are not to use that um, wonderful blessing of fellowship to pretend that we can avoid all problems in life because of it. Now, the sixth thing that I want you to jot down is this daily walk, this daily walk with the Spirit is proof of a desire for relationship and not religion, okay? This daily walk is proof of a desire for relationship and not religion. When we study the Holy Spirit, we take a complete turn towards um, rules and check off lists and all that and we see a fellowship a relationship not a religion and so this daily walk this daily um, companionship with the Holy Spirit is our beautiful relationship that we have because of Christ so just know that that the more intact you are with the Holy Spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit the more relationship you're going to feel and the less religion that you will feel now, point number seven is this. We must remember to always encourage our friends. Let's keep this going. We must remember to always encourage our friends and even our older children to hear from the Holy Spirit. We must remember to always encourage our friends and even our older children to hear from the Holy Spirit. One thing that we can do that's so dangerous in our walk is to give advice to someone without having them hear from the Spirit themselves, okay? So we can tell our friends what they should do and then walk off, and maybe that is a good thing to do. It's not like we're telling them something bad to do, but maybe that's not what they're supposed to do. Maybe they're supposed to do something different, not something that contradicts scripture by any means, but maybe they're supposed to do something different, maybe than even what you've called to do in a very similar situation. So one thing that I really try to do when I'm talking to someone or ministering to someone or running, you know, some someone run something by me is to say, this is what I think, but I want you to go back and hear from the counselor yourself. Get wisdom from above yourself and then come back and let's decide together based on what you hear. And so just remember that too. It's a beautiful thing once our children start getting a little older too. It's a beautiful thing to let them learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Um, I hear a lot of times where sweet children that walked with the Lord grew up and they went off to college and um, they did not know how to hear from the Holy Spirit because their parents had always just told them what to do, told them what to do, and never really taught them how to hear from the Father. And so, yes, we're supposed to be our children's protection and authority, and I do think that the Holy Spirit will tell us the same thing that He tells our children. But let's start slowly, from a young age, challenging our children and teaching our children, hey, you go pray about that, and you tell me what the Lord's telling you. And let's just teach them to have an ear to hear from the Holy Spirit. So, this has been such a great journey for me. It has been one of the most um, precious parts about my experience personally. I was so thankful. Um, when I grew up, I did not grow up in the church enough to be uh, taught religion. Does that make sense? I was blessed to not be in church enough to not be bound by religion. And so when I started walking with the Lord after all my sin, and after all my struggle, he immediately started talking to me. And I had never been told that that was wrong or that that didn't happen or that that wasn't true. Um, and so I learned to walk with the Spirit in a sweet fellowship, in a sweet relationship. It made me less bent towards religion. One thing that I will just caution you on is if you did grow up in a really strict church um, where you missed a lot of relationship and you were taught a lot of religion, this is the thing that you just want to dive into and study so much more than we're studying today. You want to really dive in and get this relationship. But I was blessed um, 
to have that really from the beginning of my walk because I didn't know any better, which was really, which would have been any worse. Um, and so that is how we have lived our life. My adult life has been praying through things, seeing what the Spirit said. A lot of times it was wisdom from above and not wisdom from below. There were times where I was called to quit jobs or adopt or things that I couldn't have seen in the scripture, but only the Spirit revealed to me some of those big things. But I also love that just daily nudge from the Spirit of don't do the dishes today, just go play with the kids. Or um, don't be on Facebook, just have a conversation with your husband. Those blessings, those little uh, nudges from the Spirit are just um, maybe sometimes even more valuable than the big ones because they get us through the day. So one thing that I want you um, to know as we end is that this is really going to be a lifelong journey. This Okay, so let me pray with you and let's just pray that the Lord will grow us in this area. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for each lady that's listening to this um, video, no matter whether she has been saved this week or whether she has been walking with the Lord for 20, 30, 40 years. Lord, I pray that we will all grow in our relationship with you through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that we will be able to study the scriptures more and be in the word. And I pray that we will um, be able to discern the counselor's voice over big decisions that we need to make and know your will because you do have a specific will for us. And I pray that we're never tricked into thinking you don't. Your scriptures plainly tell us that you have a call on our lives. And Lord, I pray then too for those just daily walk with the Spirit that we would just have um, a humble um, spirit that says we don't know what's best for us and we don't know what's right for us, that we need wisdom from above. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit would just speak to us in the small things and the large things and um, that we would just look back over the years ahead and say we are learning to walk with the Spirit more. We are walking more in relationship than we are in religion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.